Hello everyone, my name is Greg and welcome to another Irish Sports Daily video. In this one we're going to be talking about we're going to be talking about uh, sophomore wide receiver Lorenzo Styles and the expectations uh, that we're going to have for him uh, going into the 2022 football season. Um, if you missed my video uh, that I did a couple days ago on Tyler Buckner, um, that is also on the Irish Sports Daily YouTube page. Uh, you're going to find that there. Um, lots of other content as well. Um, our Christian McCollum had a interview with uh, Adon Schuler, 2023 safety commit um, at his high school. So uh, if you haven't seen that, check that out. If you uh, like what Irish Sports Daily has going on right now on our YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Um, but right now we're going to get into uh, Lorenzo Styles and the expectations that we have for him uh, going into next season. All right, so let's look back on uh, Lorenzo Styles as a freshman, right? So um, pretty famously, Notre Dame is not uh, doesn't get a ton of huge contributions from freshman wide receivers, um, especially in terms of snaps and overall numbers, right? So I think Notre Dame has shown that they will play freshman wide receivers, but it's not they're not going to get the type of production that Lorenzo Styles had last year um, with 249 snaps. On offense, uh, 32 targets, 24 catches, 344 yards, one touchdown. Um, had another touchdown on a reverse call back. Um, a, a, another freshman, Deion Colsey, got called for holding. Kind of bogus uh, bogus uh, penalty, but it, it, it is what it is. So he, he got that touchdown taken away. But um, as you can see, these are pretty good numbers for uh, Lorenzo Styles last year, right? And this was a year where... Um, you know, there were injuries, right? And I think a lot of, um, you know, kind of his production, you know, it ticked up once uh, Joe Wilkins uh, found himself injured and um, and he went out. I think it was against Cincinnati that it was. Um, in comparison to, I, I think, Lorenzo Styles, his, his freshman season most compares uh, closest to uh, Kevin Stefferson at Notre Dame, where... Kevin Stefferson in 2016 as a true freshman, um, he was he was on the field, I think, a little bit over 300 snaps. Let me just check it out. 359 snaps uh, for Kevin Stefferson, uh, 215 in the passing game. The majority of those, um, and I will say, so, so Kevin Stefferson had 25 catches, uh, one more than Lorenzo Styles for 462 yards, so obviously a greater higher. Um, a higher average per reception, five touchdowns versus one for Lorenzo Styles. Um, one one of the main distinctions, though, between the two of them is, as you can see, Lorenzo Styles had 109. Uh, it was a uh, passing passing snaps from out of the slot, 53 out wide. So primarily a slot player, but he was used utilized outside um, as an outside player. And Kevin Stefferson was mostly an outside player. He had 197 snaps on the outside and um, I think it was just seven or so, 17, I'm sorry, from the slot. So um, that's kind of the distinction between the two of them there. Um, some of the other freshmen who who en ended up having like really good sophomore seasons, we'll get into that in the next slide here, um, was, was one of them was Golden Tate for one. So he pretty, I mean, as a, as a part of Notre Dame lore, right? Like came in, Golden Tate didn't really know how to run routes very well. It wasn't very adept at the route tree or anything like that. Um, and he didn't, you know, he, he didn't get a ton of work, right? He, it was literally just throw, run straight and throw it up in the air and he's going to make a play on it. Um, and so then he, you know, he had a slow uh, freshman season. Uh, I think it was Will Fuller who, who similar, he had six catches as a freshman. And then, um, who else am I thinking of here? Will Fuller. Oh, uh, Equinemia St. Brown was. I think he made one or two catches as a as a as a freshman receiver. Obviously, he was sitting behind Will Fuller. And as we can go back and just take a look at what some of those guys did their their second seasons, um, this is something that I think we could look forward to with Lorenzo Styles, right? So Will Fuller in 2014, his sophomore year, 76 catches. 1,076 yards and 15 touchdowns. Equinemia St. Brown in 2016, 58 catches, 961 yards and nine touchdowns. And obviously, Golden Tate, 58 catches, 1,080 yards and 10 touchdowns, right? And I think, the, the, in my opinion, you know, I, 
numbers are hard to hard to kind of predict, right? Because we don't know, you know, what the offense is going to look like. Like if if you watch the Tyler Buckner, if you watch the Tyler Buckner um, uh, preview and kind of the expectations that I have for him, I think Tyler Buckner is going to be slinging the ball all over the place. I think the Notre Dame offense is going to be pretty wide open. Um, you know, health permitting at the wide receiver position. And obviously Lorenzo Styles is, is a big part of that. But if they're throwing the ball as much as I think they are, I, I think that anywhere, you know, I, the, the Will Fuller season of 76, uh, you know, 1,076 and, and 15 touchdowns. I mean, that's I, that's very much the upper end, right? I, I, I don't see um, any receiver having the volume, right? Just because – you know, remember in 2014, Notre Dame didn't have a, a Michael Mayer type um, at, at tight end, right? So they weren't. There, there were there were a lot of catches going to um, you know Will Fuller that, that just aren't going to be available for a wide receiver on this year's team because of Michael Mayer, right? Um, and I and I think you know it, the 2014 team also didn't utilize the backs in the passing game like the like the 2022 team will. So. Uh, those numbers are, are a little out there for me, but I think, you know, EQ and, and Golden Tate with their 58 for, you know, approaching a thousand yards receiving 10 touchdowns. I, I think that's very much in play. I, 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 you know, Lorenzo Styles, I mean, because of his um, versatility that we'll get into, they can use him out of the slot and they can use him out wide, not just out wide, but they can use him to the boundary. They can use him to the field. Um, you, you know, tons of look passes or quick screens um, that they, you know, they were utilizing a lot last year. Um, I think they'll use it a lot more this year. And Lorenzo Styles is the type of player that you, you want to get him the ball in space, right? You, you want to get him with, um, you know, def blockers in front with, with running at the defense, right? And that's, you know, we, we see the clip of him running here against uh, North Carolina in, in just the photo that I have here. That was a look screen, right? They 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 ran an RPO quick action, and he was able to take it down the sideline for for a huge gain, right? They 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 we saw him do that against USC, um, where it was kind of his breakout performance was was plays similar to that, just getting him the ball, um, and I, and I think where he can differentiate himself from Fuller and St. Brown, especially not so much Golden Tate because Golden Tate was obviously very good with his hands on the ball in the backfield is he, he was actually put in the backfield in a wildcat formation is he, they could use him in the running game, right? Because of his, his ability as a runner, because of his size, right? He's not a slight player. Um, he's gotten a lot thicker over the last year is a lot stronger. So um, not just the receiving numbers, but I think the, the overall all purpose yards. And if you've seen the, the videos that, um, that Iris Sports Daily has put out that Matt Freeman has gotten from practice. You know, there was a there was a kickoff return, um, a kickoff return period that they did to start practice. Um, I think it was early in the week, and and Lorenzo Styles was was returning kickoffs, right? And granted, it's a blocking drill, but they they had everyone back there who who could, is at least eligible to. Um, I don't want to say eligible, but you know, a, an option to return kickoffs, and and it looked like he was finding holes and getting through the holes and, and being very explosive. Right. And I got some Intel that, that Lorenzo styles had the, the, you know, one of the fastest top end speeds, you know, over summer workouts on the, on the roster. Right. So um, this is a fast player. This is an explosive player. Um, and he's going to have the opportunity as well. And I think that's part of, you know, what you, you, you need for someone to have, you know, a huge number is that he is the, he is the, the, the no doubt, you know, uh, wide receiver one on this football team. Um, he's, he's hungry for it. He's always been, you know, the considered one of the hardest workers on the team, someone with, with oozing confidence. Um, and that's obviously what you need, right? And I think that when you look at these three players, especially with Will Fuller, Equinemia St. Brown, and Golden Tate, they all had that confidence, right? They all had that desire and that belief that they were going to be, um, you know, the guy, right? And, and were willing to take that on. And I think that that's something that we've seen from Lorenzo Styles. I think that that's been talked about. 
Um, you know, Tommy Reese has been very effusive talking about how hard Lorenzo Styles works and how much he wants it and how kind of determined he is to be a great player at Notre Dame. And so he's he's going to have the opportunity. He is going to be on the field a ton. And, you know, I, I, the, the other part of this, too, and, and, and especially with Will Fuller in 2014, is I think that this receiving core – it could, could be very similar to the 2014 team in that, you know, you have your five core guys uh, with, with Lorenzo styles being in that kind of Will Fuller type of role where he's always on the field. Right. And, and Will Fuller is a considered a very, um, you know, not the biggest guy, right. Not someone you consider super durable was on the field for 888 of, I think it was like 900 and, are 970 plus snaps, right? And the other part to the to the 2014 team that while they didn't have a receiving tight end, uh, the caliber of Michael Mayer, they did have Ben Koyak, who was on the field for like 940 snaps of 970 available, right? So that's a team where you had to clear wide receiver one, who not just was a clear wide receiver one, but he was a, a new kind of addition, right? Will Fuller wasn't a huge part of the 2013 team, and and Lorenzo Styles was obviously a greater part of the 2024, uh, excuse me, 2021 team, right? So th- there's already more of a groundwork laid for Lorenzo Styles to have a big season than you know Will Fuller did, or obviously Equinemia St. Brown did, and obviously Golden Tate. So there's more pointing in the direction of Lorenzo Styles having a very big breakout season um, in 2022 than the other, those other three guys. And you have the parallel where it's like, you're always playing a tight end. You always have a tight end out there. Right. And I think that's going to be the situation with Notre Dame and, and Michael Mayer, you know, I, I, I hopefully he doesn't have to play, you know, at 98% of the snaps like Ben Koyak did, but I think that he could, and when you're he, he's always out there and then you have a receiver like Lorenzo Styles, that's going to open up things for the entire offense. Um, and it takes the pressure off of other guys, right? Like if you have a clear cut wide receiver one, then it takes a lot of pressure off of someone like Jaden Thomas, who can be a complimentary piece or Tobias Merriweather, who when he's out there, he's not getting, you know, the, 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 the coverage isn't focused on him because you're going to have Lorenzo Styles out there who's very dangerous. You're going to have Michael Mayer who's always going to command a ton of attention from the defense, right? So um, I think Lorenzo Styles and Michael Mayer in, con- in, in tandem are really going to cause problems for the defense, open things up for everybody else as a huge compliment, as we saw with Will Fuller, not just in 2014, but then in 2015. So uh, just kind of a recap here on you know what we expect and just kind of what uh what the factors are for Lorenzo Styles having a big season in 2022 um ready to be a wide receiver one right he, he has the temperament um it's it's very trendy to say he's got that dog in him and i think that he's shown that right he he went up against one of the maybe the best defense that Notre Dame saw in 2020 2021 and that was Oklahoma State eight catches for 136 and one touchdown right so um he was he was cooking that day right he has the speed he has the size right not a small guy but six one um you know not slight thick strong legs strong upper body like getting a lot stronger strong with the ball um and the toughness right he he is not not just physically but mentally as well he's a very tough football player and that lends itself to being a wide receiver one um, has the desire to be great. You know, it, it's been talked about for over a year now, what the kind of attitude he has, always learning, always asking questions, wants to be the best player. And now he's in a uh, absolute great position to do those things. Um, and then you also have the versatility where he can play, he can play the boundary, he can play the field and he can play the slot. He can play you know, jet sweeps, reverses, all those things. You could even put him in the backfield if you wanted. I mean, we could see him in the in, – they, they probably won't do this because you already have a running quarterback, but if you wanted to put someone 
in a wildcat, I think Lorenzo Styles could be a, a good option there, right? Or put him in the backfield next to Tyler Buckner, right? And as kind of a changeup. That's something Lorenzo Styles could could handle. So um that those are the things that Lorenzo Styles has going for him. Um and so just to kind of recap, I, I just think you know, the combination of things, right? The, the opportunity that Lorenzo Styles has, the 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 type of player that he is, the skill set that he has, and the the depth chart and you know his 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 intangibles and all those other things point to him having not just a good season, right? I'm not talking about like a 50 catch season. I'm talking about upper fifties, low mid sixty catch year approaching a thousand yards and hopefully double digit touchdowns. I think that's what's in him. I think that's what his expectations would be. And I think that that's what, you know, this offense should be able to produce when, especially when you have someone like Michael Mayer, um, you know, clogging up the middle and garnering so much attention as, you know, the best tight end in, in, in college football. So, um, Th those are the things that I think that we're going to see from Lorenzo Styles this year. Obviously, you know, we're, we're going to learn a lot more about his role and everything as, as camp goes forward. So, um, you know, that's how I feel. You know, I, a lot of people that I got some really good feedback about the Tyler Buckner video. Hit me hit me up in the comments on this one as well. Let me know how you feel about Lorenzo Styles. Tell me, tell me how you feel about what kind of season he could have. If you disagree, if, if you think he's going to be even better, right? If, if you think that he can surpass, you know, get to 1,200 yards or 1,100 yards or whatever, let me know what you think about that. Um, or if you if you feel like, you know, I'm off base, I, we need to pump the brakes a little bit. A lot of people said I need to pump the brakes on Tyler Buckner. And, and, and the first two guys I wanted to talk about because I, I have really good feelings about them. I have really good feelings about, you know, what's coming for them. So if you like this video, uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. It really helps out the channel. Check out all our content. I um, We're going to have something coming up. Uh, Hit and Hustle is going to be um, later on today when, when this is posted. That, that's going to be, we're going to be talking about the offensive line. Me and Jamie, we're going to do a live show. Ask your questions there. Um, until then, you know, I appreciate everyone tuning in and uh, we'll talk to you very, very soon.